Pastor Dale Fontenot here. We have come upon the 10 o'clock hour this Sunday morning. Uh, we're going to ready ourselves for our time in the Word today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our Lord is good. His mercies endure forever. And we welcome you into what has become our Sunday sanctuaries. We understand that we have released the body of Christ to be the church. And uh, we're so grateful that you're doing that. Our time together, uh, like today, times of inspiration, of preparation, times of even comfort and hope that we come to you with the word of the Lord today. And uh, we're so grateful that, uh, that you're tuning in today. We want to have the reading of the word of the Lord this morning. Uh, and as we do so, we're going to ready ourselves for our opening prayer. And uh, as we recognize that our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can think or even to ask. And what a wonderful God he is indeed. And if you take your Bibles along with me, your devices, whatever it is, again, this is not just uh, a one-man show, but uh, even throughout the state, even throughout the country, we join in together, establishing a time to connect together, even as we join in together with the New Life Church uh, ministry, as we come to uh, proclaim new life to lost and hurting lives. Uh, we've come to disciple people in this new life, uh, that they can live a life of purpose and a life of meaning. And so be encouraged, be inspired, but also accept the instruction and the admonition that comes from the word of the Lord. Reading from Psalms 8, the 8th division of Psalm this morning, as we start our time together. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moons and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Thanks be unto the Lord as we celebrate him. We want to have a time, a word of prayer this morning as we come together. We know that the needs are great. It's been a difficult week for many. Uh, it's been a challenging week as uh, maybe your schedules are changing and there's more responsibilities. And uh, even as you attempt to maneuver through the landscape of what we call life in this day, we want to pray for you. We want you to be encouraged. We want you to know that we are called on mission and purpose for the Lord. The work that you do, what's encompassed in your schedules, it really does make a difference for the kingdom of God. So let's not forget that. There are those who have lost loved ones this past week. There have been catastrophe and disasters. We want to uh, lift all of these concerns and needs unto the Lord. Let's pray together this morning. Lord, we thank you indeed for the blessings of the day. We thank you, Lord God, for a time that we can lift up your name. Father, we thank you for watching between us, O oh God. I thank you for my brothers and my sisters, Lord God, as we are connected even through this online streaming, O oh Lord. I thank you for watching between us while we have been absent one from another. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that they are strengthened in being the body of Christ. Father, I thank you that you are helping those who are struggling now, that you are giving uh, uh, your comfort and your peace, even in the midst of confusion, O oh God. Father, build them up. Fill afresh with the Holy Spirit, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for those that are mourning today. 
those who are grieving, those who are without hope, those who are in sorrow today, O oh Lord, send your Holy Spirit to be a comforter unto them in the name of Jesus. We pray for our world today. We pray for those who hold leadership responsibilities. We pray that they may call on your name and that you would give them guidance and direction. We believe, O oh Lord, that you are working all things together for good. We hunger after you. We seek after you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As we celebrate the goodness of the Lord, as we count our blessings today, so many times we are forgetful of the blessings that we live in until we come across somebody who is struggling more than, uh, more than we may be struggling. But let's learn always to live a life of thanksgiving and praise every day that we arise through every circumstance and situation. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we give you thanks for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. As we dig into the word of the Lord this morning, uh, our message this morning is entitled, Love God, Love God. It's a basic building block as we look at our discipleship model, as we look at becoming more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. We're mindful that we live in dangerous times, not just because of the world pandemic, not just because of uh, the wars and hatred that, that may be going on. We're, we're living in dangerous times uh, because people and uh, leaders are, are, are living with just a tunnel vision of today, of what makes me feel good, of what will satisfy me, of what will strengthen my life. And so people live and make decisions based on what feels good to them at this particular moment. They deal with the consequences later. And so as we are mindful of the dangerous times and the dangerous world that we live in, we're going to always push people to love God. Push people to love God. Now, don't tune out on me already. You may say, well, oh, I know I love God, but I want to lift up a discipleship motif for us today as we understand the importance of loving God as we understand that as a church, as the body of Christ, we are not fighting a losing battle when we're lifting up the declaration of love God. Love God with all that you have, with all that is within you. Love God. That's not just an empty, empty phrase, and we don't want to make it into simply a church phrase, but we understand that as we are pushing people to love God, God. And we are exploring more and more today in what it means to actually love God. It's very worthwhile as we push people to love God, to honor him, to show respect and to give a genuine love in a significant way. And what we're even lifting up in a way that our lives are ordered around loving God. Our lives are not ordered around what I want, what I desire, what my goals are, what my standards are, but our lives are to be ordered around loving God. You know, when the word of God speaks of loving God with everything in us, everything on us, everything through us, just love the Lord with everything, every part of our lives. That speaks about honoring God. That speaks about ordering our lives before God in every day, in every way, and in everything. Those who know the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, those who have given their lives to Jesus Christ, uh, we are mindful that our lives are now to be lived in discipleship, to become more and more like Jesus Christ. And what I see as the number one step in discipleship, the number one step in moving forward with a commitment to live for Jesus Christ is to love God, to honor God. That's the number one step in discipleship. You know, we're going through 
uh, this season of, of, of wanting to be strengthened, of wanting to be more and more like Christ. And now we have uh, this, this piece that we call 12547, a daily survey on a scale of one to five to rate how we have lived each day. And uh, with five being the highest, uh, saying that I have lived my life to the fullest of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I have ordered my life around him totally. That's a five. And a one is like, man, I don't even care about God. My life is so pitiful and miserable. Uh, I'm just going to throw myself a pity party. Well, yeah, that's a one. And it's all about what change, what growth. What steps do we need to be taking to have our lives become more and more like Jesus Christ? And so, friends, we have to love God. We have to love God with everything that is in us. And I want to show you uh, how loving God helps us to not live so short-sighted, how not to live so just in the moment. But love God is a long-range view. Love God is a 30,000 foot view upon our lives. If you're dealing with struggles, if you're dealing with people, if you're dealing with heart heartaches and frustrations and people just won't do right and you just can't get people to do what they need to be doing. <laughs> yeah, you tuned in to the right place this morning. Love God. We want to focus in on our loving God. As much as we want to change, people, the one thing that we have complete control over is our actions and our decisions. And I want to draw us into just a new season of loving God, of understanding what it is in honoring God, in respecting God, in um, having God play the significant role in our lives. Again, there are a lot of folks who are confused about life. They're confused about who they are. They try to be like somebody else because they don't know who they are. A lot of folks are confused in life. They're confused about how they are to live, confused about how they're to find a purpose. They're confused about life because life is just revolving around people. But what a blessing it is to a point that your life no longer revolves around people, but it revolves around God. You're loving him. You're answering to him. You're finding your purpose and meaning in life behind God. That's a blessing indeed. Our confession and our testimony is to love God, to honor him. You can't go wrong with honoring God, with loving God. He is the true foundation, the solid foundation for our lives. Even as we're living in dangerous times, even as we're living with so many people having just a nearsighted uh, view of life, can only see what's here, can only see I'm going to get my respect, I'm going to make people respect me, I'm going to satisfy myself. I'm going to make myself happy for this moment. And they're living so short-sighted. They're living in the here and now. And um, they are, they're, there's nothing new in living that way. People have been living that way for a long, long, long time now. But I want to challenge us. I love walk with the Lord to take the blinders off on what we become so immediately focused in what's going on right in front of us. We know that hell is real and the decisions and choices that we make every day determines our eternal home. But I recognize that there are many who are living in hell on earth because of the choices that have been made, because of maybe the injustices that have come their way. And so as we see that and understand that, we also want to let people know that abundant life in Jesus Christ is real indeed. The abundant life in Jesus Christ is available unto everyone. And so as a body of Christ, we have a responsibility for sharing this abundant life in Jesus Christ to everyone. It's a part of our discipleship uh, study, our discipleship calling. 
you know, I haven't uh, ridden on an airplane. I haven't had an airline flight uh, since this pandemic hit. I'm really not looking forward to one. I've not scheduled one. But uh, whenever you are riding an airplane and uh, as you are bored and you are preparing yourselves to taxi into the runway, the stewardess would come on and they will give uh, some safety instructions, as is their mandate. And one of those instructions, they will let you know that in case that there is a problem with the pressure in the cabin, that above you there is a compartment that will open and there will be some oxygen mask that will fall and you ought to take the oxygen mask and to put it on you as you go through that crisis on that air flight. Then they tell you that if you are traveling with children, that as the oxygen mask fall, they tell you don't put the mask first on the child or the children that you are with but first, put the mask, the oxygen mask on you, and then you assist that child or those children that are with you and putting the oxygen mask on them. Now, you may think that even as a parent, that's a very selfish thing, that parents are to take care of their children first and worry about them last. But again, it does no good, as the airlines would point out, that you are trying to... Um, uh, uh, um, you're putting the mask on your children, the oxygen mask, and uh, then you are collapsing because you don't have oxygen. And so the point becomes that you have to put the mask on yourself first. And as you put the mask on yourself, you can be sustained to help others. So with discipleship, we have to understand that we have to put the oxygen mask on us. There are so many folks that are out there trying to help someone else and they're collapsing. They're trying to help difficult situations and difficult circumstances and they're collapsing because they are so frustrated. They're so disgusted. They are so, I just don't know what to do and you're collapsing. God, forget about you. You haven't put your oxygen mask on first. You haven't gotten your love walk with the Lord on like it needs to be that you can go and then help someone else. And so that's why it's so important to be in tune with teachings like this that will encourage us to not just take for granted a love walk that we have for God, but there are some testing mechanisms that God has ordained, that God has put out there that can check ourselves and that can check us even as we move forward. And so even as we understand that calling, let's work on loving God more. I know we may not have a good picture or a solid picture or a total picture on what it means to love God. Let's honor God more because it's just the, the right thing to do. And it's a thing that helps us with a long range view. It helps us dealing with even the immediacy of our circumstances and situations around us as we commit ourselves to loving God and to honoring him, so much more in our lives will line up once we love God, once we honor God, all the more indeed. And so even as we understand all the more what God is and what he has called us to be about, we can love him indeed. And so our calling is to, is to even train those around us. You raise your children up to love God to honor God. You instill that in them. You instill that principle. You instill that lifestyle in them to love God, to love God all the more. And we help our friends. We help those that we are mentoring to love God, even as they deal with the immediate stuff in their lives and the frustrations, the disappointments. Nobody cares about me. Nobody honors me. Nobody is thinking about me. We check our love for God. And again, when you do this, you can see a larger perspective. You can see a 30,000 view foot, a 30,000 foot view of what's going on in your life and how the Lord is still in control. We honor him and we love him indeed. And so therefore, there is a passage of scripture that helps us even as we live in the midst of um, a, a world of disrespect. 
Jesus is lifting up the teachings of, of a commandment, Matthew chapter 22, as you can see on your screens, verses 37 through 39 is what our text is. And here there are those religious leaders that are trying to trap Jesus and to get him to say something that they can catch an aha on. And so they ask him, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all that is within you, everything that is within you. Now, I know that it would be much easier to honor God and to love God if we didn't have to live among people and among systems in our society. It would be a lot easier to love God and to honor him. But the fact is, we live among people. For those of you who have had moments and weeks and days during the pan pandemic stay at home time, I pray that you have been focusing in on loving God. You've not been around as many people as maybe you have typically been around. Others of you have found yourself to be seemingly around more and more people, be it by Zoom, be it by phone calls. And now that you're beginning to go back to work and the responsibilities that are there, uh, we can truly understand that um, with people, one way that we can practice loving God more is as we interact and live among people. We have to deal with people, but you know what? When you show honor to God, when you show honor to God and how you deal with people, know that it's not about those people, but it's about your relationship with God. That's the bottom line. Even as we talk about discipleship, we're talking about our relationship with God. How we deal with people is simply uh, maybe become one of those signs, one of those uh, measuring tools of, of what is our relationship with God. And so the challenge today is to move beyond just, um, just saying some things, move beyond just giving the right religious answers and the religious statements to actually living this thing out. You know, we're all wired different ways. You've heard me talk about that, people being wired differently. You know, some of us are wired to uh, need more affirmation. Some of us are wired to uh, just need some, some more care in our lives than others. And some of us, you know, we get our feelings hurt easily. Others of us, we are good at hurting feelings of others because maybe we're so insensitive to some things. We're all wired differently and life affects us at different points in how we deal with life. And so if you want to call it my solution, my remedy for all of us, is to love God more, to love him more, that we can gain a clearer view of why some things have to be around us, a clearer view about who we are, how we can become more and more like Christ in the midst of challenging times, in the midst of struggles with people and society and nothing going our way. Love God. Love God with everything that you have because it's not about those people it's not about those circumstances. It's about your relationship with God. You say God is your all in all? Well, understand that everything that happens, it's a, it, it gives you a way to give a reflection of what your love to God is all about. Let's love God all the more. And so that becomes our calling. Things that happen to us, things that we deal with people, it's not about those people, but it's about our relationship with God. It's not about, let me put down my religion and handle this for a while. It's not about that. It's about loving God. It's about being strengthened in our relationship. There are, are several passages in the scriptures that helps us to understand how we can gain a greater understanding of what our relationship with God is really all about. Because again, our lives are not about people. Our lives are about God. It's about being called by God, about loving him. Let me share an example. In the scriptures, you know that Jesus teaches that we are to love our enemies. 
Yes. Love our enemies. Love them folks who don't love you. Love them folks that are scheming on you, trying to get back at you, trying to get over on you. And Jesus says, love your enemies. And it's not because those people deserve your love. That's not why Jesus teaches us to love our enemies. It's not about that. But it's about, listen, it's about our relationship with God. If we can't love our enemies, it says something about our relationship with God. Because it's in loving our enemies that we honor God. It's in loving our enemies that we show of our love for God and for a bigger picture. Oh, yes. We got something to work on right now. God, I want to be obedient to you. You tell me to love my enemies? I'm going to do that not because they deserve it but because it shows what my relationship with you is, oh God. See, it's the bigger picture here. Don't be so pigeonholed just in the corner that it's all about so bad today. You got to do No, it's not just a corner of today. We live for eternity and God is trying to show us. And as we own up to this discipleship picture, we can see clearer what God is trying to do. It's a bigger picture. When the scriptures tell us that we are to do good to those who persecute us. Come on. How can we do good? They're persecuting us. And we're to do good for them? We're to give them a cup of coffee? We're to give them a gift? We're to open the door for them? We are to consider them above us? You must be crazy. That's just a picture of your love for God. Again, we don't do good to those who persecute us, who nail us against the wall on our jobs. We don't do that because they deserve that. We do that because we're honoring God. We're loving God. See, even these two simple examples can reveal a lot about our love for God. We love God after we love us. And see, we got to check ourselves. It's not about loving us as much as we love God. It's about discipleship, becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. That's a strong, strong piece in there. Scripture teaches us about unity in the body of Christ. See, when you know that there are some difficult people to get along with, but yet the word tells you to be in unity with the body of Christ and not to pick up your marbles and go play somebody else, it's not about those difficult people. It's about your relationship with God, that you can't honor God enough to be in unity with the people of God. It's about you. It's about you. It's about your relationship with God. It's all about you. You love yourself more than anybody else, and all you can do is to yap, 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 yap about sister so-and-so. Yap, 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 yap about brother so-and-so. Yap, yap, yap about this one and how I'm neglected and how I'm not taken care of. That shows a lot about your relationship with God. We, we establish, we maintain the unity in the body of Christ because it's how we honor God. How we honor God. Love God and show it by honoring him. Do the right thing, not because you feel like doing the right thing, but out of an honor to God, out of love to God. See, abnormal and sick things are happening in our world each day. Hatred, abuse, selfishness, theft, bitterness. We must rise above all of these and seek to honor God in our actions. That's the number one building block. That's the number one step in discipleship is to honor God. To, be, to understand that we live a life of purpose. We live a life of redemption. We live a life as, as being ambassadors of reconciliation. And obedience to God becomes a vehicle that we can show our love to him, that we can show that we honor him. 1 John 5 and 3 says, This is love for God to keep his commandments, to keep his commandments. God will honor you when you honor him. Honor God. Don't live life being controlled by people, but live life lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. Live a life being obedient unto God. 
that reveals, that opens up and to shows, show where our relationship with God really is. My prayer for you is that we may take a closer look on our relationship with God. We must love God more than we love ourselves. It's in loving God that we find more self-awareness in ourselves that we can even love ourselves all the more. That's a challenge as we are becoming more and more like the body of Christ. Friends, I want to pray with you today, encouraging you to worship God, to honor him, to love the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we love you and we honor you. And we thank you that you are teaching us and showing us more and more of what it is to love you, of what it is to honor you, oh God. We thank you for that. Help us as a people who are longing to be more and more like Jesus Christ, to honor you and to show the love that we have for you. I thank you, Lord God, that with your help, with the infilling of your Holy Spirit, we can be strengthened and empowered to love you all the more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And the, and the body of Christ said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, take the word of the Lord with you as you are challenged to grow in your love walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, even as we join in together today and uh, we are recognizing who the Lord is, we are mindful that next Sunday, We'll be right back here. We know that many churches have begun to meet together, and uh, that, that's well. Uh, we have formed a task force of reopening at New Life, and uh, uh, we'll be in communication uh, with the New Life folk as we move on uh, through every day and through every week. Wanted to care for you, wanted to make wise choices. And so next Sunday, 10 o'clock, we'll be right back here on Facebook uh, Live. But next Saturday, May the 30th, New Life Church of God will have a drive-in service next Saturday. I said Saturday, May the 30th at 10 a.m. at the Ministry and Retreat Center at the campground, 445 Campground Road. Just a drive-in service, 10 o'clock to 1045. You drive up, you park, you stay in your cars, and uh, we will have a worship service even there. So next Saturday, weather permitting, uh, we'll join together at the Ministry and Retreat Center. Also be mindful of our 12547 daily survey. Come on, we want to see a pattern of growth with you. We want you to be intentional in your days, knowing that things that come against you, press against you. But as you are intentional about that daily survey, with the tools that we've given to you to not be so... Um, objective, but to really be subjective and to giving you measuring tools that you can look at your days. Listen, now is the opportunity for the body of Christ to arise. Now is our season. Don't be caught on the sidelines. Don't be caught being weak and regressing. Let's progress as we take our world for Jesus Christ, as we lift his name up. So thanks be to God. See you again next, uh, next Sunday. Those of you who are able to make the drive-in services on next Saturday, May 30th, we welcome you to do so. So until next time, may the Lord bless you. You pray for me. I'll pray for you. We're going to see God work in mighty, mighty, mighty ways. Until next time, God bless you.